What's up, everybody? It's Tony again from Drinks and Opinions for another review of Night Court, Episode 5, The Apartment. This was not a great episode, but I didn't think it was horrible either. In this episode, they were trying to run two separate storylines, one involving Gergs and Judge Stone. The other storyline was involving Dan and Olivia, the prosecutor. In this episode, there were several times that the jokes had just fallen flat. I get what they were getting at with the joke, but it just didn't go over well. At least not with me. It's almost like they were trying too hard in this episode to make things funny instead of letting it progress naturally and letting the comedy carry itself. That being said, the first storyline, like I said, with Gergs and Judge Stone was Judge Stone basically needed a new apartment. She came to work at the courthouse just smelling horribly bad and everybody was being nice and not saying anything about it. Judge Stone explained what was going on, why she had the really bad B.O. going and Gergs decided she was going to help her. And Gergs goes around to help her in a way that's not illegal or sketchy, it's just weird. She's basically moving all the list of people that are going through evictions to the top of the list without the judge knowing for the court paperwork, putting all those people at the top. And the judge was uncomfortable with that, basically saying, hey, I can't use my position in this way just to get myself an apartment. It's basically what she was getting at with it. So Gergs goes around again, decides she's going to go ahead and try a different approach to find an apartment. Takes her down to where they do the death certificates at the courthouse. And Abby, Judge Stone, that's her name, Abby, was a little uncomfortable with that. And who wouldn't be? Gerg's like, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Nobody weird here. There's nothing weird that goes on here. And she knocks on the glass guy, raises the thing to give her some envelopes of people that had passed with their addresses. So Judge Stone could look them up. And the guy working... Inside of the death certificate thing was the creepiest looking guy. Whoever played that role did it very well. He came off creepy, nailed it, spot on. The other storyline revolved around Dan and Olivia. Olivia ended up bumping into somebody she hadn't seen in years. It was somebody that she had interviewed with at a law firm. And she got really uncomfortable and Dan's like, what's going on? Olivia basically explained it that... um. She had done an interview with her. Everything went great. She nailed it. And they ended up getting stuck in a, one of those spinning doors for several hours. And Olivia and her just started getting uncomfortable being around the lady and tried to make small talk and it went bad. She started talking about pudding. The pudding part of it, I get what they were getting at with it, but they were trying to play that off too much to the point where I didn't think it was that funny myself. You know, they could have just said the pudding incident, explained it, and left it at that. But there were a couple times they went back and referenced it, which I didn't think was that funny for this episode. Again, I think they're just trying too hard. And they need to stop trying so hard and just let everything happen naturally. But that being said, she ended up having a court case with one of the people that worked at that law firm, defending attorney for a client. Dan decides to help Olivia. Starts giving her advice and starts helping her out. And Dan ends up going into why he got out of being a prosecutor. At least this is what I'm thinking got him out of it. The way the storyline went with it. That he had gotten out of it because he went through a similar situation where he did a job interview. And was doing really well. And put it this way. They were eating oysters. And he was shucking them with the, a fork. And accidentally stabbed one of the people that had taken him out for dinner for the law firm he had applied for. And accidentally stabbed him by accident. Pulled it out. Then put it back in. Which you're not supposed to do. Shouldn't pull it out either. That joke, I didn't think it was bad. I think it was better than the pudding one. But that being said, this episode was alright. I didn't think it was the greatest. It was not the worst by any stretch of the imagination. I just think in this one, the way I feel is they tried too hard on some of the jokes. And some of the jokes just were not good jokes. A few of them had did fall flat. They did have a really good scene towards the end, though, which I did like between Judge Stone and Dan. 
Judge Stone got a text from her boyfriend, which lives in upstate New York, apparently, from where she came from. And he was supposed to be coming down to spend some time with her before heading back up. Well, she gets a text at the end. He's not going to be able to make it. She was really visibly upset. Who wouldn't be? Especially if you haven't seen somebody you love in a while. She ends up walking off back to her chambers. Dan follows her, starts talking to her, and really is trying to help her. Like I said in the last episode, Dan and Judge Stone, Abby Stone, are developing the same relationship that Harold T. Stone and Dan had had. And they're building this up the same way. Just slightly different. Because him being her daughter. So there's a slightly different dynamic there for this relationship. But still the same nonetheless. And he talks to her, explains it to her, and says it's okay for her to be angry. Because she's happy-go-lucky, and if you've seen it, you know that. She's a happy-go-lucky person. She's trying to play it off. It's all not a big deal, but Dan tells her, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be mad. And she went off, and just upset over everything going on. And she's like, can I have my chambers for a minute? So Dan and Gergs walk out, and they hear a loud bang and her scream. She walks out with a smile, says, I feel better, basically, and walks off. Dan and Gergs look in there. Little bitty... Abby Stone flipped her big, heavy desk in the judge's chamber. That I laughed at, I won't lie. Probably a little harder than I probably should have. But I would say all in all with this episode, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Like I said, some of the jokes fell flat. Some of the jokes were drug out a little longer than they probably needed to be. The pudding thing, they could have explained the pudding thing and left it at that, but it was brought up a couple more times after that. Which was, at that point, was Beating a dead horse, in my opinion. But all in all, I don't think it was a horrible episode. I don't think it was a great episode. It was watchable. It almost felt like a filler episode. I'm not saying that's what it is. It just kind of came off that way. But all in all, I'd say on a 1 to 10 on this episode, I'd probably give it a 5. And that's about where I would go with that. But I would recommend everybody continue watching this show. It hasn't been horrible. We all miss the old Dan. But as I said in my last review, they explained in an article why Dan had changed. I get it. But I hope you all do give the show a chance, watch it, and judge for yourself on it. That being said, thank you for watching this review of Night Court Episode 5, The Apartment. Remember to like and subscribe. I will see you all later. Take care.